Hi everybody, Rob here from Prior Studios and welcome to this kind of introduction to uh, open VDBs in Cinema 4DR20. Um, volumes, uh, they're kind of new to Cinema 4D. Uh, you might have used them if you work in conjunction with like Houdini or something, um, but they're incredibly powerful, really, really good fun and they are the biggest new feature that Cinema 4D's had in a long, long time, probably since the MoGraph module was added. So. I'm not going to go too in-depth in this video, um, but I'm just going to show you maybe two or three examples of how they work and how you can use them. So first of all, let's come up to volume here, and I'm going to get a volume builder, and this is where kind of most of the magic happens. Now, in itself, it does nothing. Uh, so what can you do with it, and what is it? A volume builder basically takes uh, various elements from Cinema 4D and turns them into voxelized volumes. And a voxel is basically like a pixel, which is cubic rather than flat. So let's take a sphere and I'm going to drop that sphere into my volume builder. So this is, there are two ways of doing this. The simplest way is like this. So you can see that this sphere has now been turned into uh, cubes, which are, if you go to the volume builder here, 10 centimeters on each edge. Now this isn't geometry, this is basically just a representation of the volume. Um, and this isn't just a surface, these are properly depth um, and they go all the way through the sphere. So they're not a shell, this is a, a, a solid volume. Okay, so I'm gonna take the sphere out of there because actually the best way of using volumes in Cinema 4D is to have the volume here and drop the sphere into our objects field. So I'm gonna drop that there I'm going to hide the original sphere mesh just so that we get a cleaner viewport. Now, if this lags at all at any point, that's probably because I'm recording this video on a, an older Mac and I'm obviously using screen recording software and everything as well. Um, and you'll find that actually the, the, the volumes are pretty much real time. They're really, really responsive, uh, even when you get really complex. Just wanted to get that out there now. Okay, so if you're looking at your volume here, you can change the resolution of it. So a smaller number is a higher resolution. Let's drop this down to two, and you'll see two things. Firstly, this it much more clearly represents the sphere object. Now, we all know in Cinema 4D you have render perfect. Uh, it doesn't matter if that's on or not, you will always get the kind of facets uh, with the volume until you do something else to it. Now, let's. I'll just knock this back up to five, just for speed. Um, so we can still see the facets are there. Now, if we want to smooth this out, we have the smooth layer. And you can see that's starting to get rid of the facets uh, and it's making this much more like a sphere. So it's definitely still pixelated. But if I come in here, you can see there are no facets on, on view. So that's what the, sphere, the uh, smooth layer does. Now, if I was to grab, um, let's just say a the worst example possible because it's a flat object. Let's grab a tube. I'll just back out and show you how we can uh, utilize the smoothing options. So if we were to add the tube to our thing here and just hide that there, make sure that the volume build is on there. You can see this is now not smooth. So this is kind of a hierarchical thing that we're looking at. So we need to drop the tube below the smooth layer and then everything becomes smoothed. And now this object here would be, you know, that would take a good few minutes to model that. And although we're not looking at geometry, we can make it geometry very easily. So you could model this in Cinema 4D using polygon tools, but what you can come in here is you grab that tube and you can go, oh, hang on, I wanna do this with it, or I want to do something particularly complex or make something that would be hard to get a, a good topology from um, and you can see that the kind of the, the intersection between the two things uh, remains smooth uh, as long as they are both below that smooth layer so what else can we do with this well we could actually let's just grab that tube again i'm going to oh, grab the tube i'm just going to lift that up and show you how this can work as a really, really cool uh, replacement in certain situations, not in every situation, for a Boolean. So if we go to our volume builder and we change this interaction from union to subtract, you can see now that we have a really clean, lovely looking Boolean and we already almost have a kettlebell there and um, a weight for the gym. 
and that took almost no time and it's kind of infinitely adjustable we could grab a handle and we can change this and we can see what's doing almost in real time we could yeah, we can do all sorts of things you can make a, a core here so instead of using a lathe that would be perfect we have this kind of offset thing going on uh, and you can see it in real time as you work okay so what can we do with this because this is obviously uh, just a volume this is there's no mesh here well if we come to volume menu and we say well let's do a volume measure make the builder a child of the measure and we instantly have geometry so the, I mean, this is going to be dense because it takes a polygon for every edge of every voxel so if I just go to shading with lines on you can see what we have here um, and this matches our our resolution of our volume builder which at the moment is five so if I was to decrease that down to two uh, you can see that this is now even denser um, but that's not a problem it's still pretty quick you can see that I can navigate around here I can even come in I can get my tube and I could just move it across um, and it updates really really efficiently uh, that's one thing which I really love about volumes in R20 is that it's really super efficient and super intuitive to use because the, the feedback is so instant okay so that's one way of looking at doing kind of like a boolean operation let's look at something else um, and I'm just gonna do let's grab a sphere and I'll just duplicate that I'm just gonna call it big I'm gonna drag out a copy if I can learn to spell correctly drag out a copy and I'll just call this one small and it's purely for ease of me remembering what I'm doing I'm gonna make that one 20 I'm going to go to MoGraph and let's just add a cloner and I'll make my cloner the parent of the small cube and I'm going to change my cloner to object and I'm going to make the big sphere the object so you now see I've got all these little spheres stuck all over the surface of this big sphere I'm going to increase the count now if I come up to my volume and I go to volume builder um, I'm going to drop my cloner in there and I'm going to drop my big sphere in there and let's just hide those original geometries uh, so we can see what's going on I'm also just going to change the resolution here so we can see a little bit more clearly what's going on so we now have what looks like kind of a, a big bubble with these little bubbles on it look a bit like growths and you have this kind of nice intersection so you have this kind of smooth almost weld like um, it looks a little bit like a beveled finish let's just reduce this more so you can see it um, now this will get finer and finer the, the smaller your your um, centimeter count hit the, the higher your resolution um, but of course if you go back in and add the mesh you can smooth that or you can add a smooth layer again uh, which will smooth out these transitions okay so what was I talking about I was talking about another way of creating interesting meshes so let's go to our volume builder and just change this mode to subtract probably the wrong way around it is let's drop the big under a little go back to subtract and now we have this kind of Swiss cheese looking ball uh, which is pretty cool that's uh, a, a nice way of using these two tools together and this is the good thing about the um, volumes they work with just about everything um, I'm going to show you another couple of examples in a minute but for this and don't forget that you can use all of the effectors so if we wanted to go to uh, let's add a let's add a random effector make sure that's actually in our cloner uh, it's not so let's drop that in there and go to my random effector I'm going to turn off position let's just play around with the scale and I'll go for a uniform scale of one so I'm going to get a, a big variation in cloner sizes and you can see this is taking out some lovely big chunks around here there are some little chunks taken out um, this is all looking great um, and I'm pretty pleased with this I think that would be particularly difficult result to get uh, especially considering you could come to your cloner and you could say oh you know what I, I want a few more of those um, you couldn't do this very easily in any other way uh, and this is still you know it's so parametric I've not got any editable objects in here uh, I could come in and I could go you know what? I'm gonna just uh, make a, a mesh out of this volume and I now have let's just clean this up a bit just get quick, quick shading um, I still need to smooth out the facets but that's fine uh, lots of different ways I could do that I could make the 
um, big sphere editable and subdivide it in a smoother way. I can add a smooth layer. Um, it's just kind of infinite possibilities from this very easy to use simple tool. Now, I just want to talk about the measure again. So we have a couple of options with the measure. We have voxel range threshold. So this is how tightly to the underlying voxels this mesh actually clings. So if we were to reduce that threshold, you can see that the, the facets are, are much more clearly defined and the, 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 the voxels are very easy to see like so. But we could bring this out. We could start to smooth things out this way. Um, I generally think that like between 40 and 60 seems to be a good range, but you can make it adaptive so that it will help kind of uh, fold around creases and edges and that way you can find the right balance between these two things um, and you could drop this into a hypernerves if you want so let's just add a hypernerves to the scene drop the subdivision in uh, the volume measure in there and it's starting to smooth out again and that's because the volume measure does actually make this into editable geometry um, you'd have to hit c to then play with the actual polygons and do various kind of actions to them but it's there and this is geometry as I said right let's look at just one more example um, using tools that you might be familiar with so let's just grab a volume builder and I'm going to grab actually let's uh, grab a let's go for a particle emitter and I'm just going to rotate that up like so I'm going to turn it around Oops. Like so, and if I was just to play this, you can see what I've got. I'm going to back out just a bit, and in my emitter, I'm going to go for let's say 50 by 50. Um, visibility, start emission, stop emission. Speed's probably about right. I'm going to change the variation on the speed uh, and probably the lifetime as well. Rotation, not worried about, uh, not going to worry about any of the other things here. I'm just going to let that run like that so let's go back to simulate particles and let's have a little bit of turbulence okay so this is mm, let's make this a bit stronger let's make the strength 20 they're all flying about a bit more scale a bit bigger mode acceleration is fine although we could have it as more like a force Actually, let's leave that as that okay so that's now done but what we can do is we can go oh, I, would, I don't want these to be just spheres or objects flying around I want this to be more of a volume my volume builder here if I drop my emitter into there and press play you'll start to see voxels being spat out from this instead now they may not, not look all that pretty at the moment, but don't forget you're having kind of a mass in the middle where they are actually kind of together um, and then they start to fade out a little bit. And don't forget, I'm also using the most basic kind of particle setup here. Um, I could reduce this down to say five and you'd see this is definitely looking much more spherical, uh, but what we also have is um, when we go to our volume measure, uh, the same as we looked at before, we can make this uh, a lot more loose when it comes to the, the threshold. So you start to get this. And if we were to combine this with various other objects, we could have, um, you can actually, so I was gonna say how you can combine these all together in various different ways is, is quite fun. Don't forget, we could have this being removed from another object. So if we were to add a cube, let's just crank this up and just lift it up to about here. If we had that in here and we add that to our, let's just turn the mesh off for a minute. If we add that to our, our builder um, and we want to take away our emitter from the cube, so subtract now, we can kind of have so this might be a handy way if you're having like a machine gun firing towards something uh, and you want to knock holes through it watch this so this would be good for like um, well if this was the other way up you could you could imagine this being um, 
a tool for making splashes in a puddle when it's raining. Uh, there are all sorts of different things you could do with this. Um, and it's just kind of a joy to work with. It's, it's quick, it's easy, and uh, it has lots and lots of possibilities. So I'm going to show you one more uh, example of using volumes. There are so many things you can do with it. I'm not going to cover many in this video, but I want to show you one more. So I'm going to hell shift Z and just going to go to field. And I'm going to add uh, fields in UNR20 as well. And I'll talk about them more uh, in another video. And I'm going to add a random, random field. Let's just look at this. So what we have here is three sides of a cube. And this is just to show you kind of a preview of the size of the patterning that you've got going on. Now we have access to all the other kinds in here as well. Um, I'm just going to leave it as random. I'm going to change the random type to noise because if I use a noise for this, I get access to all the different noises that Cinema 4D has. So I'm going to choose say electric. I'm going to scale this up to about 300. And don't forget what we're seeing here is not just 2D noise. We're seeing 2D from the different sides of it, but this is actually representing a volume field. So this is actually kind of like Swiss cheese uh, or a sponge. So if we were to add this to a volume builder, we will get this, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna hide the field for now. Let's just change the resolution of this so you can see a bit more clearly. Um, and this, there is no way you could model this easily or quickly, certainly not as quickly as this in Cinema 4D. And this is for motion graphics is just, it's way ahead of anything else that I've been able to use, certainly this efficiently. Uh, it's incredible. And it has so many uses and so many kind of possibilities for creating all manner of effects, all manner of objects. And don't forget, because this is using a field, we have the options to animate the, the, the noise. And this is animating not just kind of up and down, but through depth as well. Uh, and this will kind of generate. I'm not going to show you now because I don't think that my uh, screen capture software will allow me to do it quickly enough. Uh, you know what? Let's have a go. Um, let's increase the resolution back up to say eight, uh, so it won't be won't be as pretty, but you'll get a a good idea. Maybe six, just so you can see it a bit more clearly. Go to random field, and if I change my animation speed to I'm going to go for three, just to make it a bit clearer for you. Uh, press play. And you can see that starting to adapt with kind of pockets of air and density kind of changing as they go. Now, obviously, this is like the most ugly basic example you're ever going to see. Um, but it's worth just showing you that possibility because I think fields are incredible for how you work in uh, Cinema 4D with volumes these days. Now, we can also work we're combining fields with other things let's add another field in fact let's do that so let's go field and I'll add a let's go for a torus if I take my volume and drop the torus in there as well moments of union let's make that subtract but let's have the noise subtract from oh, apologies I forgot to press the button subtract so now we have let's just hide that torus um, we now have this shape, which if you imagine you're creating, and don't forget that you can move a field around. So let's make sure we've got the, the torus here. We can move this around and this is moving through the noise field. So this gives, and this is animatable of course, so this gives you so many options for growing things and like weird landscapes, which is something I've been kind of experimenting with. Uh, growing weird landscapes and plants is, is pretty cool. And if you were then to drop this volume builder into a volume mesher, uh, you then have geometry which you can clone onto. So you can build a landscape and then you clone things on it and grow random trees and stuff out of it, uh, which is all pretty cool. So I'm just going to do a quick recap. I think you, first thing to remember is that fields uh, are just unbelievably powerful. Second thing is that the volume builder will work with just about anything that generates inside of Cinema 4D. Particles, uh, thinking particles, geometry, all the primitives and parametrics and everything. Um, 
you can use splines, uh, anything that will cr basically create a vertex uh, can be used to generate inside of um, the, the volume builder. Um, so that's been a little overview of the volume system inside Cinema 4D R20. I uh, hope you're as excited as I am about it. Uh, I've been using it for a while and I absolutely adore it. Um, I'll go over some of the different options in more detail in future videos. Um, but just as soon as you get your hands on it, just start playing with fields and things because they're so powerful and so much more fun. Uh, I really do believe this is the, the, the best release of Cinema 4D in quite some time. So this is a, the, the, the kind of the mesh as it looks. So we can add a material. In fact, let's just bin that material. Let's go to one of the new node materials. Uh, let's go for a car paint and I'll drop that onto the mesher and yay it disappears uh, again this is problem with um, the Mac that I'm using to record this I'm using an ancient Mac mini um, but even still with no lighting this is just the default light and that mesh you can see how good it can look um, I'll do a separate video at uh, some time uh, where we talk about the the node based materials and that'll probably be the next next video I do because I have been wanting for years and years and years for Cinema 4D to have a node based material editor um, I, I started out as a lightweight user and lightweight has been using a node editor for donkey's years and um, it's the best way of working uh, absolutely adore it it's powerful intuitive simple and you can get really complex materials very very easily uh, in a really kind of a logical way so that's been it. Um, if you've got any questions, please leave a comment below and um, I'll try and answer as fast as I can, uh, either just with a quick reply or I'll do a follow-up video. Uh, so I'll speak to you all again soon. Thanks for watching. I've been Rob.